we're moving on to a new segment. We're introducing mm. a new segment, folks. It's called drum roll, please. D- deep or shallow? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna. Cam ask came you. up with this. Yeah, last night I was thinking, man, we should play a game with them. It's a little get to know them game, and uh, you choose if you want to go deep or shallow. We'll give you a mm. question related to that. Okay, I'm so, ready. Yeah, yeah. Kiki, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll you, go first. You want deep I, or shallow? Shallow. You going shallow? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. shallow naturally. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're just starting to date someone. Okay. And are there any foods that you wouldn't have on the first date or the first few dates, let's say? No, because I love to eat. I don't care. Like, I know some people have their things where they're like, oh, I'm not eating crab legs. Crab legs. I'm eating the crab legs. I'm not <laughs> eating wings. I'm eating the wings. I'm eating whatever it is that I want to eat. What about sushi when the green stuff gets caught in your teeth? Mm, that does not usually happen, but I'm still going to eat it. I'm eating. <laughs> wherever we go, I'm going to get something. I don't have those like rules and boundaries. Even if, it's not, if it fucks with your stomach, you're still... I don't really eat a lot of stuff that don't fuck with my oh, stomach. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not lactose intolerant, so I'm safe with the dairy. Oh, okay. Um, I think maybe I would prefer not to go to an Indian restaurant. Yeah. Uh, yeah that might be the only... That yeah. might be like not so good. Yeah. But it's a great way to get to know each other very quickly. <laughs> Very is, all right. That's yeah. fair. Regina. I think um, I'm gonna go deep. Okay, you're going deep. Mm-hmm. Okay, how has the podcast affected your sex life? Ooh, ooh, that is pretty deep. Mm. My sex life. So the only negative thing that I would say it's affected is like sometimes people think I'm gonna be way more nasty or way more sooner. Mm. But I also haven't really had a lot of sex with people that listen or even know about the show. So to your knowledge, to my knowledge, but Mm -hmm. a lot of the, I already have like great sex. I don't have a lot of bad sex. And so it hasn't, honestly, it really hasn't affected it. Maybe I try more new things than the average woman because we talk about it every Thursday Uh, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of sex toys. So like that is maybe how it's affected it. We try more toys and try a lot of new things. Okay. But I have heard on your show that you might've fucked a listener's dad. You yes. want research, Cam? I like it. You got her <laughs> stuff. Was insane. But it was years ago before I was even doing cocktails. Oh, okay, okay. But it was still, I was like, wow, the world is so small. I, I came in contact with this girl and uh, she was a listener. <laughs> and I was like, why does she look so familiar? And I could, you know, when you see somebody and you're like, I don't know, but I know you. It's not like I saw you in passing. It's not, I know you from somewhere. And so back er, when like early 20s, I've always liked older men. I'm talking about 49 and up. And well, so, well, how old were you when you liked the 49 and up? He, I've always, it's always, well, not when I was a teenager, but when I was a teenager, I liked older men, just older men all the time. So I was probably about 22 years old and I met her dad. And he taught me a lot of things about sensuality, about sexuality, about how to really like please a man. I sound like I was his prostitute, but <laughs> I wasn't. It was just like he taught me so much about sex and my body and a man's body. And I was a silver fox. forever. He wasn't that fine. He was just really good at sex. He was more like a I don't even know what to describe him as. Uh, but <laughs> no, I mean, like it's, it's the reverse cougar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a silver fox. But I think I was I the first time up. he had dealt with someone so young. Mm-hmm. Also, I was a waitress at the at a club that he was at. Anyways, oh. I we, we wake up one morning and his daughter had stopped by his place because she forgot something for school or something. She's younger than me or around my same age. She comes in to grab what she needed to grab real quick. That's why I remembered her. Wow. And I was Isn't like... That crazy? Oh. So at what point did you come... How did you find her I again? Found her, I went on hmm. Instagram... And she came to a live show and I was like, I don't understand why she looks so familiar. And so then I went to her Instagram and I was scrolling, scrolling, scroll. I would not let up on it. And then I saw her daddy and I was like, oh, fuck her daddy. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Does she know? She knows I, didn't, I didn't even, I never even mm-hmm. mentioned to her that she looked familiar. Cause I didn't know. And I'm glad I didn't. Cause I didn't want, I don't think she remembers, but I didn't want her to remember. Cause that's weird. If somebody came up to me and was like, I fucked your daddy when I was 21. I'll be mad. <laughs> why? I bet subconsciously me? though. I don't know because it was so quick. Knew. I don't think she knew I don't either. Think she knew. That's fucking crazy. That, that the is, world is too small. That is wild. Or you have a huge fan base, and then you end up fucking. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Probably some other daddies I don't fuck. I'm, and they mamas. I'm yeah. actually and they brothers and they cousins. <laughs> I'm actually scared that the guy with the cows is going to listen to this podcast and say that was me with the funky cows. You've talked about the cow situation oh. on here many times. You and guys it might mean, make him excited. Sometimes people like hearing about themselves and do a cow photo shoot. <laughs> 
cow yeah. skin rug. Yeah, if cow he gets hat. upset, just send him a couple pictures of you and a cow. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go keep it? Okay. You I'll go, go and, deep this time. Okay. We're going deep. So you've been doing this for seven years. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most useful thing that you've learned from doing the podcast? Um, I think the most useful thing has been editing. Editing. Yes, because I've been able to do that with other projects, like uh. just really fine tuning it. So I learned in college, but then getting better over time. And I've had different like random projects with different people, whether it be other podcasts or other content creators that may need a little bit of help. Lately, I've been too busy to do it, but I used to do it a lot. And it wasn't even something that I really advertised. People would just hit me up. Oh, wow. So that's something that I've been able to make money off of. And it's like, I'm not a real editor. I know I'm cheaper than a real one, though. So <laughs> it was working out. I love that. I love that you went editing route because uh -huh. you you do. I mean, every time I talk to you, you, you handle all sorts of shit related to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Most people kind of like outsource some things, but you're like, you know, but we've been all outsourcing lately. Yeah. Cause we've been growing. We got to outsource it's a lot going on. Yeah. But when yeah. you say editing, I was also involved in the editing before this whole podcast and everything else. And I tried to use an editor, but they always like were discussing whether, what scenes I wanted, whatever. And I wanted a certain way. It was like painting a painting and have someone else holding the, the paintbrush. So that's why I like being more in charge of the editing because mm -hmm. then I can do it the way I wanted to do it. Other, yeah, otherwise. some people don't care. And some people also, they don't have the time. They don't really care. Or they're just like, I don't really know what would look good. Yeah, They'd rather just have somebody else do it and take that off their plate. And We're I'm talking years ago when that, oh. before all socials. This oh. was just to, to create little... Um, like montages and oh, uh -huh. directing, you know, small little movie events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what was that face, mom? <laughs> little, little movie events. Movie events. Little, little pornos. I, I was was, that's exactly what I was thinking was pornos when you said movie events. Like, what, what is a movie event? Nah, nah, nothing that fun. When we came up with this question, I was thinking... About like, sex, yeah, about oh, sex. But you, you, I me. love that you went right to the end. Yeah, that's like, what I was no, saying. Okay, this is the okay, important shit right here. This so is the important editing. things about the business yeah. of podcasting. Yeah. Okay, she's um, staying vanilla for there. Sex, that was not um, deep. No, I'm still very vanilla. People will say that I'm not. <laughs> Medina will say that I'm not sometimes, but I am. I am too. I'm a fucking I think boring I, vanilla. I think I've learned how to keep an open mind and that there's so much stuff out there that people are into and to control my facial expressions when they <laughs> share them with me. I mean, I'm not great at it, but I've been learning. And so now things don't shock me as much yeah. when I'm out in the wild. It might shock me on the show, but I can get it out then instead of when I'm at dinner with somebody and they tell me about an interesting kink that they have that I think is so gross. But I can keep my face together because I've heard about it before. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't think in seven years that there's anything that we have not heard. I know. Literally I mean, nothing. The first several years, I was shocked by some of the shit I was hearing. But now I hear about the guy with the toe in the, in the vagina. I'm like, okay. No, I've heard, yeah. You know how many toes I've heard about? Or what about the human cash point where he would basically... Like he would find he a, a pay pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would love to find one of those out in the wild. <laughs> um, I, I did a story recently about a guy who got a jump rope and he put it in his um, penis and he was doing sounding oh. and it got all the way in there. He had to go to the hospital. Ooh. And I'm just like, wow, people find pleasure in some of the most painful places. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. That sounding stuff literally sounds like the worst it does, but I'm like, we w remember when we did that sex conference and we were like moderating a panel on something, don't know, but Medina went to- Oh, Frolicon. Yes. Yeah. And so Medina went to the dungeon that they had and she called me and told me later about everything that I missed. And it was like people, there was a knife class and yeah, then people were snow. getting the hooks in their back oh, and- oh. Yeah. It was nasty. Yeah. I like to feel like a princess during sex. So anything involving pain is Hello, just... Hello, princess. Mm, 